readers, reviewers, countrymen. Lend us your ears. Good morning and evening and afternoon and everything in between everyone. Uh, welcome to the Brothers Gwyn channel. Today we're going to be talking about uh, three of our favourite historical films each. So we've each chosen three different films um, and we'd love to talk to everyone about these films. Uh, now these are historical films so set in uh, historical periods or settings uh, and uh, we're not thinking of authenticity although that does add to some enjoyment of some films, um, but we're just focusing on purely uh, the storytelling basis and what we enjoyed about these films. Yeah. So, Will, would you like to kick us off? So we'll pick three films each and we hope that you're entertained. <laughs> My first pick is, as you might have guessed from the reference just before, Gladiator. Um, so I think a theme that is going to influence a lot of the films that we choose is going to be fantastic performances from the central characters mm -hmm. um, and gladiator russell crowe as maximus decimus meridius he is fantastic he's charismatic his voice is amazing and it perfectly suits his role in gladiator and we can't forget about joaquin phoenix i hope uh, there's many different ways people can pronounce it joaquin phoenix is commodus oh, I, <laughs> I think that it's very rare to actually be scared mm. of a character it's, it, i think there's a lot of characters that you could hate but to be scared is that unpredictability and Commodus, on my on word, he's terrifying. It's evil, isn't it? You just have no idea what he's going to do because mm. he can come across as charming, but he's just got a look in his eye yeah. um, and he is scary. Mm. And I think that um, the way they both bounce off each other and they're both, those roles really form um, the groundwork for the rest of the film to grow off of. You can and see think, actual hatred between them. Yeah, I think if they were different actors, I think that Gladiator, I think it'd be a great film but I don't think it would be in this list. Um, I think Gladiator so obviously is set um, uh, during uh, the, Ro um, the Roman Empire. It's at the height of the Roman Empire. Maximus Decimus Meridius is a general, um, and through some means he becomes a gladiator. And Commodus is the Roman Emperor. Um, it's a tale, we all love a tale of vengeance, and this is up there with the best. And if you like Gladiator, um, uh, and you want a book that might be quite similar, I would recommend The Rage of Dragons and the Fires of Vengeance by Evan Winter. Uh, the first two installments of The Burning, which are out now, book three. I'm waiting for it to come out, but it's not out yet. Um, there are many similarities, especially with book one to Gladiator. My first pick is the one, the only, The Last of the Mohicans. Now, this is it's got to be in my top three films ever. Absolutely amazing. Obviously, Daniel Day-Lewis is the absolute He's king of everything acting. he does, whether it's making shoes in Italy or um, yeah. whether it's acting. And uh, he's just such a nice guy as well, but what an amazing actor. An amazing film by Michael Mann, uh, set in 1757 during the French uh, and Indian War uh, in what was uh, North America. And it's just a phenomenal film, a phenomenal tale of um, where the First Nations meet uh, the European empires, mm -hmm. And it's just kind of a big old melting pot of combat and um, politics and love and friendship and chase scenes and uh, beautiful shot scenery and yeah. trees. And it's just amazing. Um, there's just some phenomenal moments. And the whole film has the greatest soundtrack of oh, all time. Amazing. Apart from Lord of the Rings, it's got to be the greatest soundtrack ever, mm -hmm. hasn't it? Yeah. Um, Daniel Day Lewis's portrayal is just phenomenal. It is based on the book uh, called The Last Mohicans by James Fenimore Cooper, uh, but I would not recommend reading the book for many, many, many reasons, which I won't delve into here. Uh, but it's also based on another film, I think it was in the 20s or the 30s, a uh, film called The Last Mohicans as well, mm. that the director saw and he wanted to kind of reproduce. So, um, But it's a fantastic film. There's amazing uh, actors in there. One of the greatest chase scenes uh, of all of time. All time. Uh, a very different style of chase scene and a film that will be guaranteed to make you mm. cry. I just, I love the character of Hawkeye and Chinkachuk, his father, uh, and also Uncas as well. Now, yeah. just brilliant tale. Mm -hmm. I think that it's also great that it's one of the few romances in films that um, I think is actually executed well. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not forced. Because we're seeing the time of an hour and a half film whilst you're driving um, forward other plot lines. It is very hard to do yeah. a romance, but... Um, Last Mohicans does it really well. Yeah, absolutely. Now, 
I haven't read too much fantasy with any uh, Native American portrayals in there. I will say though that there is absolutely fantastic uh, thread through the Traitor Sun cycle after the Red Knight. It starting, I'm thinking it starts in Book Two, The Fell Sword, um, by Miles Cameron. Now there is a Native American thread which is very similar to the chase. Uh, the last kind of 15, 20 minutes of The Last Mohicans, and it goes on for a few different books, uh, one thread weaving through it, and it's mm -hmm. pretty awesome. I'd definitely recommend that if you're interested in reading uh, about any kind of the, th the themes in Last Mohicans within a fantasy setting. And the second film that I'm choosing for this list is The Outlaw King, which was released on Netflix a few years ago, with Chris Pine starring as Robert the Bruce. Um, I awesome think that film. It's so brilliant. We both watched it recently. Beautifully shot as well. I think the thing with The Outlaw King is that it delivers in every single way. The tension throughout, oh my word, it, you're just on the edge of your seat literally the entire time. I think that yeah. it shows that everyone is grey. They do bad things that, um, and to win, they realise that they have to... Um, be brutal at times. Yeah. Uh, now we fight like wolves. Yeah, I think Great that point. I think a lot of um, historical films show the um, good characters to be perfect and honourable. Chivalrous. But, yeah. yeah, and I think well that's great, but um, it it's not the realistic. Outlaw, yeah, the Outlaw King shows that to uh, realistically a lot of people who are honourable sadly don't win. Yeah. Um, and I think that Chris Pine is absolutely fantastic, um, as is Florence Pugh, um, and the rest of the cast. Um, the Outlaw King, it was actually um, inspired by Robin Young's Insurrection Trilogy. So if you want to read, I haven't read them yet, disappointingly, but um, if you want to read, if you've watched and loved The Outlaw King on Netflix, I'd recommend reading Robin Young's Insurrection Trilogy because that is what it was inspired by. And mm -hmm. I think it actually predates, so it um, looks at Edward Longshanks actually conquering Scotland and then it goes to Robert the Bruce pushing England back. There is also a new book coming out by Mark Morris talking about uh, Edward uh, Longshanks. Now Mark Morris is a really good non-fiction writer, mm -hmm. he's absolutely brilliant, he's written about the Norman Conquest and William the Conqueror and his next book coming out, I think it's coming out soon actually, yeah. next few months, March or April, mm -hmm. um, but that is about Edward Longshanks. So if you want to find out a bit more about him, I would definitely check that out as well. Now over to my second choice uh, is The Patriot, um, starring Mel Gibson, Heath Ledger and many, many more, such as Jason Isaacs with his lovely hair. Um, but yeah, so The Patriot, I absolutely love The Patriot. The very first few lines delivered by Mel Gibson in uh, his amazing oh, voice is, yeah. just encapsulates the whole film. I have long feared that the sins of my past will return to haunt me. Whoa. That's that, that sounds like the grey wolf, like the old wolf, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, character. absolutely. So, and with a past. Yeah, he's so good in this film. Also, Heath Ledger's in it. I'm a massive fan of Heath Ledger. And in this film, just, just. This, the the pacing of the film is phenomenal, and all of the different the different sections, the beginning, the middle, the end, the points that make you cry, the points that uh, you're punching the air with mm. satisfaction or joy. Yeah. Um, there's so many amazing moments that we could talk about, mm. and I think. Uh, it has the key character, which is Tavington, Jason Isaacs, and you utterly despise him. Similar to I Rob hate Roy, that man. where you hate Tim <laughs> Ross' character, Archibald Cunningham, I think it is, um, but you, you totally despise Tavington in The Patriot, and it's done so well. Um, Mel Gibson is amazing in this film, as always, and I've just got to say, it's just brutal, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And it, it, you know, it's, it's a story of uh, the American Revolution, um, where the colonialists go against uh, the English army and it's just paced so well. Mm. So I'd really recommend this. Uh, I haven't read the Powder Mage trilogy, um, but I hear lots of people recommending that. Um, it's If you want to read a book with similar technology set in a fantasy setting, I would definitely check mm. that out as well. I think Bernard Cornwell has done some stuff about that kind of era as well, the American mm. Revolution uh, in America, obviously. Um, so yeah, maybe check those out as well. Yeah, I'd say with the Power of May trilogy, so it's set in the same period as Flintlock Fantasy, mm -hmm. but it's, set, it's inspired by the French Revolution, which is about um, five to ten years after right. the American Revolution. Sure. So my third pick is The King, um, which is also on Netflix. It has Tim Timothy Chalamet portraying Henry V, um, and it incorporates the Battle of Agincourt, uh, which is uh, within the Hundred Years' War, and I think it's 1415, Ed? Yep, 25th of October. St. Crispin's Day. Um, I love the St. Crispin's Day speech. Um, but anyway, back to The King. It, I think that one of the strongest strongest points of the king is the language. It is mm. beautiful, um, 
and they're not timorous with their word <laughs> choice. A little reference there um, uh, to one of Timothy Chalamet's speeches. Um, I think that whilst, um, as with all of these, they're not 100% historically authentic, mm. and we feel that the Battle of Agincourt, they could have included the um, Welsh longbowmen, but it is still brilliant and I think rousing and just great to see a film set in that period um, that we really enjoyed. Um, there's a great range of characters, um, some awesome... Full, full staff is yeah, brilliant. Great, yeah, really some good. awesome um, uh, si um, action sequences from duels to large-scale battles. Um, and I think the pace is a bit slower than Gladiator and The Outlaw King, which I've chosen, but that by no means means that it is less enjoyable. And it's got Robert Pattinson's French accent, which oh, is just hilarious. Absolutely brilliant. So funny. And if you want something that's similar to The King, it was actually inspired by Shakespeare's play Henry V, which is very good. Um, not my favourite of his plays, but still great by all means. What is your favourite of his plays? Uh, Macbeth or Richard III, I'd say. Mm, um, so great. Um, but we'll talk about Macbeth another day. In Henry V, there's a lot of great speeches, um, and obviously it's inspired by history. It's a political play, really. So if you're interested in that, pick Henry V. Now, Ed, what is your third film? My third and final choice is the horror western uh, 2015 Bone Tomahawk. Uh, I absolutely love this film. I've subjected everyone uh, I've ever watched a film to with to, to watch this. It is really scary. Uh, that's probably one reason why I love it. It's absolutely terrifying. Um, uh, it's set in the Wild West. Kurt Russell is a sheriff, so perfect film. If you've seen Tombstone, you know what Kurt Russell's like as a sheriff. He's absolutely awesome. I love that guy, especially with his amazing um, The Hateful Eight beard. Uh, it's also got Patrick Wilson, Matthew Fox, and Richard Jenkins in, and they are amazing actors. The dialogue in this film is probably my favourite dialogue in any film ever. It just feels so authentic, so funny as well, and really subtle. It's a film about a group of troglodytes who steal people, uh, and it's, it's about Kurt Russell rustling up a, a small band to go and rescue um, some members of their town. And they go on a journey, and the journey is intense, when they reach their destination, it's even more intense. There's some horrible scenes, to be honest. Um, yeah. But uh, I, don't, I actually think there's no music in the film apart from the beginning and at <laughs> the end. It opens up with someone having their throat slit. Um, it's really brutal. But I, the, the thing that captures me is the dialogue and the relationships between the characters and the growing tension to the very end. Oh my word, the, the final tension in that. Scenes. And it's I was just sweating. Unreal. And uh, I think my favourite performance in this must be by Richard Jenkins, who plays the deputy sheriff. He's a lot older than um, Kurt Russell's character. Uh, he's not very reliable, but he's just such a sweet guy yeah. and very simple man. And just the, the, the exchanges between the characters just is phenomenal. Um, I would say if you like uh, watching this, I haven't read many Western horrors before, or well, none at all, to be honest, um, but I would definitely recommend anything written by Larry McMurty. His, um, his Westerns have a very similar dialogue, which is very clever, uh, very period authentic as well, and feels very, very real. Uh, so I definitely recommend that. There's some great action, also exchanges between the characters and uh, Native American tribes, though these Native American tribes in Larry McMurty's books are nothing like the troglodytes in uh, Bone Tomahawk, but that's a film that I love. So we hope that you enjoyed three of our films each. Obviously, maybe next month we'll have a different three in mind. Um, that's the thing with taste, they often change day by day. But they're three that we are really loving at the moment, um, and we hope that if you've not watched them already, that they've given you some new ideas of what you want to watch. And if you have watched them, we hope that it's reminded you of some parts that you've really enjoyed about these films. If you do watch Bone Tomahawk, watch it in the dark. That is But contract. not on your own. <laughs> You're not, yeah, not on your own. So that's all from us for now. Truth and Courage, the Brothers Grin. Stay safe, Truth and Courage. Thank you.